Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Bert Dicht. I am Vice President of Membership for the National Space Society. And on behalf of Larry Ahern, Vice President of Chapters, I welcome you to our NSS Town Hall. And we have two great presentations this evening, previewing the virtual ISDC and also a membership overview. So again, I thank you for joining our series of virtual town halls and space forums. What we're gonna to do tonight is just go over our virtual etiquette, a few short NSS announcements, then I'll be talking about the upcoming space forums and town halls, and then we'll get right into our program. Uh, first, we'll do the virtual ISDC, then we'll talk about the membership overview, and then we'll close out for the evening. As always, I'd just like you to remind you of the virtual etiquette. If you'd like to submit a question, please use the Q&A function. And uh, that is only seen by the panelists. It, it's much easier to track the questions and make sure the panelists and speakers can see them. But we also have the chat function. Everybody can see that. Be respectful of the panelists and the audience. Uh, and if you do put a question in there, we'll do our best uh, to get that and get that to the speakers. Finally, it is best to view things uh, in speaker mode. And that way they'll be, you'll be able to uh, focus in on the presenter. And let's go. And now I just wanna remind everybody about giving to our cause. Uh, so if you enjoy our programming and these space forums and town halls, uh, feel free to make a donation to support the NSS and just go to go to go.nss.org slash donate dash now and we'll make sure to put that into the chat as well. And finally, after the town hall is over, please take a few minutes to complete the post town hall survey. Once you exit the session, the survey is anonymous. It's only four questions, it only takes you a couple of minutes at the most. And your feedback is really useful in helping us plan future events. And what's coming up next in terms of our town hall? Well, of course, Next week, we're doing the virtual ISDC. We are taking the following week off. I know we typically meet on uh, a two-week schedule, but we'll be back on July 8th, and we're going to be doing some NSS volunteer awards, uh, recognize the excellence of the many people who contribute to the National Space Society. We are doing a special session on the 10th. This is Saturday. Uh, we're going through right now what we call our SPUN debates and where these students from all over the world are debating issues related to the space program. And we're gonna have a celebration and recognition of them on the 8th, I'm sorry, the 10th, but it's going to be early in the morning. It'll be about 8 a.m. Eastern time. That's because we have students all over the world, but we'll be inviting you as members to attend. If you can, that would be great, but we'll record that one as well. We're still working on some details for July 22nd and then, Going into August, we've got uh, Robert Stowe. He's the SLS Utilization Manager uh, from the NASA M M uh, Marshall Space Flight Center. And he'll be talking about the SLS. And then on the 19th, we have David Chudwin, a longtime NSS member uh, who has actually witnessed the Apollo 11 launch and wrote a book about it. And he was a teenage, a teenage space reporter. And we'll be working on our September schedule and what we're gonna be doing uh, as we move into the fall. So take a look at our uh, space forums page on space.nss.org. It's got the schedule, plus also the access to all of the previous space forums and the recordings. And now I'd like to talk about our, our program this evening. And it's my pleasure uh, to welcome Aggie Cobrin, Rod Pyle, and Dale Scran. And I'm gonna be turning this over to them to give you a great preview, an introduction into the virtual uh, ISDC that's coming up next week. So let me stop sharing right now. And I'm gonna turn this over uh, to Aggie, Rod and Dale. I don't know who will be speaking first, but thank you for joining us. And we look forward to hearing about the ISDC. Aggie always talks first, go for it. I don't always talk first, Aggie but I'll talk first. Sounds good. <laughs> Well, welcome everybody and um, good to see everyone and we're going to give you a little introduction to 
what we're going to be doing next week. There's four days of a virtual program. It starts on Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is one portion of it. And then Sunday is a secondary portion of it. So Dale will describe the Sunday and Rod and I will go through um, the three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sound, sound good, Rod and Dale? Okay. So we are planning a three day free and one day, um, I hate to call it red meat, but I guess I got used to calling it that. So we've got a four day event Interactive coming up. Sunday. Let's call Inter it. That's it. That's Sunday. better. That's better. Okay. Um, so we are looking forward to seeing all of you on that, some or part, some or all of it. And uh, we've got a website with all sorts of speakers that Rod is going to bring up shortly. Rod? Yes. You can bring and up the website. Oh, okay. And you might want to remind people that uh, we'll actually be streaming this twice in different hands. Yes, we will be streaming it twice. We're going to stream it, stream it next um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we're going to do a streaming for, for overseas, for Europe, for India. So about two weeks later, after 4th of July weekend, we'll stream the entire thing again. So we're not going to put it up in segments until after that. So what we'll do eventually is it'll be up there, but, but for the time being, you'd have to watch it in the four days that it's up. And then we'll repeat that very, very early in the morning. Um, just like Bert was saying for some other events so that we can hit some other time zones, primarily India, because we've got a fair bit of content from there. Um, so we really wanna showcase it there. And then we've got some student competitions that are from all over the world and we've got some other things. So we wanna make sure it's shown in time zones that make sense for other folks. And then eventually we will break it into segments and have it up and available. All and right. There's going to be about 20 hours of content. So there's a lot of content there, 20, 20 plus hours in total. So go ahead, Rod, let's bring it up. All right. And you seeing it? Seeing it. Good. Am I talking now or are you? Uh, you can talk now and then we'll kind of flip back and forth. Okay. So what I wanted to do was just because uh, Aggie and I did most of these recordings together. I did a couple of them on my own. She did a couple on her own. But I just wanted to kind of share with you what you're going to be seeing and what it feels like, because we've all sat through a lot of Zoom presentations in the last year of varying quality. Um, but one of the things, especially with our, with our featured speakers here, that we really try to do was get them excited, because not all of them know a lot about the NSS. Some of them know who we are vaguely uh many aren't members and some just don't have that much awareness so we really took some steps to try and get them more acquainted with the organization but decided about what's going on so i just want to talk about a few of these uh on the upper left there you see rob manning rob's an old friend of mine he's the chief engineer at jpl and I, as i always like to rib him about he's probably the only person at that level there that doesn't have a doctorate but he's just that good. He started off on the Galileo mission way back in the 80s and uh, was soon put in charge of the engineering for the, um, the uh, oh, good God, the first Mars rover, Sojourner, um, the Pathfinder mission, and uh, just rose from there. So he's, he's an incredible thinker and he got a Space Pioneer Award this year. So I went up to JPL to give it to him in person and because NASA has a 12 foot distancing requirement, we had to set up kind of a history channel thing with two cameras, but he was so excited and so gracious and so thrilled to get this. And I think you'll really enjoy his talk because he, he, he talks like, like a, a, an eighth grader giving their most exciting book report ever. The hands are going and he just could barely get the words out because he's so excited about it. And it was just an awful lot of fun. So he walks us through the process of developing entry, descent and landing profiles for these rovers, which we all know it's hard, but we're, we're not all acquainted with why it's so hard. So he went into some great de detail about that. So I think you really enjoy it. Also, his colleague on the science side, uh, Bobby Braun, who also got a Space Pioneer Award, talked about the science side of the same subject, landing on Mars. So the two of them were, were marvelous. Uh, Jeffrey Mander, of course, is the CEO of NanoRacks. I think you, you've all met, probably many of you have met him at ISDCs. And he's a real eloquent speaker. He's got a new program called uh, Outpost, which will be repurposing upper rocket stages in orbit as uh, wet workshops and so forth. And they have a mission going up pretty soon. It's actually going to try some, some cutting of uh, tank structures in orbit. So 
So he talks about that quite a bit. That's exciting. Something most of us didn't know much about. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the people you might not know so well. We all know Anita. She's a, a wonderful speaker and, and gives us a, a great introduction to the program. Janet Ivey, of course, uh, is our on our board of governors and the president of Explore Mars. So she had a, a fun conversation with Chris Carberry about the intersection of efforts between Explore Mars and the NSS. Pascal Lee, who runs the Mars Institute and works up at NASA Ames, the SETI Institute, uh, gave us a very spirited talk about how to do Mars missions, which was an awful lot of fun. Tarek Malik, you may not all know, he's the editor in chief at space.com. So where I only have to do a magazine four times a year, he's got to do that stuff every day including on the weekends. So he's a real stormtrooper. And um, we had a fun conversation about what's coming up in new space. John Mankins, of course, talks about space solar power because John Mankins is space solar power to many of us. And Phil Plate, the bad astronomer, who I'm, seen, I'm sure many of you have seen on video, had a great discussion with, uh, I think he talked to, was it Dave Dressler, Aggie? No, it was Jeffrey Notkin. Jeff Notkin, that's right. Jeffrey Notkin. Jeff Notkin, who always presents well, and they had a very spirited and engaging discussion. Uh, I don't know how many more I should go through, but I just wanted oh. to let people know how really exciting this is going to be. Uh, it's a lot of content. It, it's the three free days are between five and six hours each. And I know exactly where everything is because I'm editing it right now. And uh, it's, it's a lot to watch, but you know, there's just some real gems there. And uh, it's really something you won't want to miss. So be sure you're available those days. I think you'll enjoy it. And, and in total, there's probably about 60 different pieces of content. A lot of it is in the 10, 15. You can open up the whole speaker page. A lot of it's in the, in the 10, 15, 20 minute range. There's a little bit that's a little longer, but that was an intentional. So you get a lot of bites of a lot of different subject matter. Um, you know, it, it's sort of a really good overview of a lot of different things. And that's that's what it's meant to be. Uh, a lot of the people watching it will not have been members. They will not be members. They have an interest in space. Um, not a lot of knowledge base, but an interest in space. And part of our goal here was to get more members. Part of the whole idea of running something like this is to get 10, 20, 30,000 people watching it and hopefully um, bring in more members who are interested in this. And you'll see interstitials between some of the segments talking about membership, talking about magazines, talking about donating to the NSS, because that's all part of the reason for doing this. So it's exposure and beyond exposure. It's really getting people interested in what we're doing, um, how we're doing it, you know, what, what, what's going on out there. And for the most part, it will be thousands and thousands of people who are probably going to watch it for segments. By the way, Gwen Shotwell, we yeah. were able to get, which was forget. pretty miraculous. How can you yeah. forget that one? That was pretty yeah, miraculous. No. Well, there's a couple more I should mention. Yeah. Can I do that now? Of course. Uh, Gwen Shotwell joined us to accept her Von Braun Award, which, of course, is an incredibly special thing to get. She gave us about 10 to 15 minutes. Just talked about what's coming up for SpaceX, what their goals are for the next year or two. Did not give us any dates for Starship. I asked twice. So you can only get what you can get. Didn't um, I hear something about July, though? Uh, not, not with any conviction. Um, Jim Green, who's uh, coming up here in a second, or did I pass one? There we go. If anybody's never seen Jim Green, he's NASA's chief scientist. He's another one that rose up to the top fairly quickly. And um, he is just an incredibly gifted speaker, wonderfully enthusiastic. And he, you know, I mean, he works at headquarters. He's in the top, the C-suite at headquarters. So he's a very busy guy. But if anybody's a member of Clubhouse, he's on there probably three or four times a week for about an hour each time. He does two podcasts. He's constantly doing the news. He's constantly doing Discovery Channel. I mean, the guy's just a powerhouse. He had a really fascinating talk about an article he and a, and a colleague wrote, uh, I think, early this year about the primordial moon and how some of the resources there, they think, actually migrated from Earth along with this primordial atmosphere. So that's an incredible talk. David Gallo is an oceanographer who dove on the Titanic and a number of other wrecks uh, over his career, along with, with all kinds of other ocean exploration activities. He has a conversation with our director of marketing, Tony Poston, so you won't want to miss that. And there was one more I wanted to hit up here. Oh, Scott Bolton. Uh, for those of you who don't know Scott, he was the uh, lead PI on the Juno mission to Jupiter. I mean, he's done a lot of missions before that, but that's his most recent. So we did a fairly lengthy talk with him about uh, recent discoveries at Jupiter. And that was really a thrill. Michelle Hanlon uh, hosted that. And he's, he's, 
he's a scientist, he's an artist, he's a musician, he's, he's a real Renaissance man. So he talks across a lot of different disciplines that kind of joins them all together at the end. So that that's that's a must see too. I could go on and on, but but you get the idea. Peggy's uh, in there too, and somebody said, "Let's not forget Peggy." Um, Peggy Whitson, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, she's somewhere on that page. If you stream through it, you'll find uh, her further down. She was the first female commander at the International Space Station. She's broken all kinds of records that, you know, they keep breaking records, but uh, at one point she held the record for uh, spacewalk hours, um, all kinds of records for first, first woman to do this, the first woman to do that. And she's just one of those, one of those titans of space flight that if you're in the room with her having a conversation, it feels like all the oxygen gets sucked out of the room and you're with this, this incredible mind. Also, Steve Jurbitson, for people who don't know Steve Jurbitson, He's that a venture was capitalist. Fun. That yeah. was fun. He's a venture capitalist who invested in SpaceX in 2008, where they were teetering a little bit. And it's you sit down to talk to him, and it's like there's five brilliant brains trying to all get out of one mouth. You know, this is a guy that got through Stanford Engineering as an undergrad in two years. Now I went to Stanford; they don't let you do that. So he had to figure out a way to game the admission the. Uh, the, pro, the, the, the online program for signing up for classes so he could take 25 units a quarter to get out in time. That's what kind of brain he has. So we have two talks with him. We have one for he's getting his Pioneer Award with from uh, Bruce Pittman. And that was the talk about investing in SpaceX and what's going on with Planet Labs and so forth. But I think the real gem of that day, there's a lot of good stuff that day, but one of the gems of that day is he took us on a tour of his office. And for anybody who's ever wanted to see what goes on behind the scenes of the Smithsonian, this is what it looks like because he has a space collection that I think is conservatively estimated at about 25 to $30 million. And he has one Mars chunk, a Mars meteorite of, of Martian crust that's probably worth, uh, his conservative estimate was about a million dollars just for that one rock. But he's also got, you know, Apollo hand controllers and uh, uh, a set of Apollo uh, acceleration couches for the astronauts. He's engines, got engines, full size rocket engines, full size he's rocket got engines, quads. He's got original computers. From space. He's just got this the space age collection that that will just blow your minds. And, and, and the again, best part you know, of it is how excited he is. You remember well, I was that? just going to say he's yeah. walking around his office with his cell phone, <laughs> kind of panning around, and I'm editing out the part so you can actually see what's there. But he's just so excited to share this stuff. And it is magnificent stuff. So if you get a chance, I'm, I'm going to make you get through all of, uh, all of Thursday to see that because I want to make sure you stick around. But it's, it's really thrilling to see. So you, you got to make sure you tune in for that. There's and just so a lot point. of really interesting stuff, fun stuff, um, different you know it's different it because it's small chunks and it's bite-sized pieces there's a lot of stuff in there we've got student contests in there from various different groups um we've got just a lot of even just short few minute talks in there and that was kind of the 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 what we wanted to do was get people interested interested in what's going on interested in the national space society interested in getting involved because i think that's something that we really need to work more at um, is piquing people's interests. And I don't come from a space background. I understand space a whole lot more now, but it's not my background. And some of these talks were just really exciting and fun. There's a lot of them. So, you know, I'm sure they're paced in between. We've got to talk to Rod about that. But there was just a lot of talks, a lot of fun, um, a lot of really interesting things. And we will eventually break this up and market it in different ways. And again, try to attract people to it because that's really the goal with something like this. Because we're just asking about membership, we're asking, and that's gonna lead us into what Dale's gonna talk about. But the goal of the, the, the first three days was, was intrigue people, get them interested in the National Space Society, get them understanding what we're doing, get them thinking about it, donating to us, all of those things. And then the fourth day is a very, very different type of day where it's, it's, it's much more specific. It's much more geared for people who are already part of what we're doing, have a really good understanding of it. And we'll get Dale to explain that day a little bit now. Okay, before that, let me just please mm -hmm. encourage everybody, everybody on this, this forum, we really need your help publicizing this. We're doing a big reach. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn. 
but any of those of, of those platforms where you can share, especially on Facebook and uh, Instagram or on uh, Twitter, please go on and do so and share it with your your list of anybody you think you might be interested. Because day in space, we got about fifty thousand people in total. That doesn't include people that watched it later. I'll be doing a bunch of radio on this to try and get people to tune in. So that'll that'll bring in many more. But we really need your help in getting the word out because this is. This is our big event, and this is what's going to drive people to to join. And then that revenue helps us keep bringing you things like good magazines and great conferences and wonderful stuff like the event that Dale's putting on Sunday. So let's hear about that. Okay, so it's my turn? Yes, Your sir. Turn. <laughs> Can I share the screen? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, we're going to do that, and hopefully nothing bad will happen. Um, oh, nothing bad will happen. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, can you see the screen, Aggie? Yes. Okay. So um, let, me, let me try to tell you a little bit about this. So uh, we decided that uh, we were going to do something a little bit different on Sunday, and we were going to have an experiment. And uh, the, the experiment is, is we're going to try to actually charge for online content, knowing that the entire population of the United States has been conditioned to have free content <laughs> during COVID. Uh, so that's a challenge. But on the other hand, um, uh, our, uh, this is a volunteer produced event and uh, the costs are very low. So every single dime that you pay to pay for a ticket will go straight to the bottom line of NSS. There are essentially no additional costs for this event. And uh, if we, uh, it could be very significant financially. So we've already sold, I think 37 tickets or so brought in about 1500 bucks and there's a real potential. I would echo what Aggie said, you should spread this far and wide. I'm gonna tell you more about it, of course, but I just put the link in the chat and just take that link and send it to every single person you, you know or you've heard of. There's only about 475 tickets available. We've already sold, like I said, around 37. So get with it. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about it. So the idea is, is to have an event that is, as Aggie said, more for somebody, I hate to say, use the word insider, but someone who already knows about space, who's very interested in space settlement and is looking for not a quick introduction or the high points or the big events of the year, but for a really in-depth discussion from world leaders on different topics. And this is, there's two parts to this. Actually, I'm gonna go through the basics first. So it's from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, June 27th. It's gonna be a, by Zoom, just like this call. Um, when you register, which costs 50 bucks, uh, you get a link that will allow you to uh, get into the conference. And if you're an NSS member, 10% off. So, you know, if you wanna get the discount, log in first and uh, you'll get the membership. And if you don't, that's okay too. We, we, we will be happy to take the extra five bucks. So don't feel you need to log in if you just want to join. So the first part is uh, called Perspectives on the Artemis Accords. It was organized by our president, Michelle Hanlon, who's going to be the moderator. And it has a simply fantastic uh, group of people here who are going to give you an in-depth look at the Artemis Accords. And one of, the, one of the goals we had in putting together Interactive Sunday is, of course, by the way, we call it Interactive Sunday because you can ask questions and stuff during the... Uh, during the panels um, and it's, it's not broadcast, it's live. And I, I do wanna emphasize that, you know, you should not expect that you're gonna see this on the YouTube channel. It's, uh, I'm not gonna absolutely swear that no part of it will ever appear in anything NSS does because I don't wanna be like lying about something, but mostly it's not gonna be repeated and you're not gonna see it anywhere if you don't sign up for it. And if you miss it, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, you, so you should sign up now, right? That's the point. Um, Anyway, uh, so uh, Michelle is, is, as it says here, the co-director of the Air and Space uh, Law Program at the University of Mississippi and the editor-in-chief of the Journal of Space Law. So she really knows her stuff. She's our president and she has a fantastic wealth of experience. Um, I, I wouldn't like discount her because she's uh, chosen to volunteer her time for the NSS. Uh, she's just an absolute treasure. And it'll, you're, you'll be privileged to hear what she has to say about this. She's put together a great panel. Uh, Dr. Harrington um, is uh, the Dean of Space Education at the Air University, former chair of the Department of Space Power of Air Command. 
So again, somebody uh, who, who actually I have to say had Michelle's job before Michelle, you know, before Michelle had it. Um, we have a gentleman, uh, Meme from Harvard Law. He's going to talk about Ar uh, Artemis and Ar Africa and the Artemis Accords. I've read his paper; it's it's very interesting. Um, and Gabriel Sweeney, who is the head space lawyer at the U.S. Department of State. This there is no higher ranking space lawyer in the United States than Mr. Sweeney. So th this is not going to be like a lighthearted uh, frolic in the park. It's going to be a very intensive two hours. You're going to learn a lot about the Artemis Accords. And it's shaping up to be this fantastic battle between the U.S.-led Artemis Accords and the Russian-Chinese uh, lunar base. Uh, and you know, we just heard that Brazil was, uh, has joined up the Artemis Accords. So there's, you're going to get a blow by blow. But uh, th this, like I say, this is not going to be a summary. This is going to be the real discussion. And you're going to have a chance to ask questions. Now, but that's really just the warm up for the main event. The main event is a debate. We're going to see, moderated by our own Anita Gale, Mark Hopkins, our CEO emeritus, will go up against Dr. Daniel Dudney, who is the author of the infamous Dark Skies, a book which purports to prove that space settlement is an existential threat to humanity, and that if we actually build space settlements, we will all die. So that sounds kind of crazy, but his book actually has some fairly um, sophisticated arguments, as you might expect from a professor at Johns Hopkins. And you will get to see uh, a thriller in Manila, you know, you know, a real debate uh, on a real topic. And it, it should be really exciting. I don't know who's going to win. So you better buy a ticket and find out. Uh, the, the, because Dark Skies is, is such an important book, if you're really seriously into space settlement, um, we have two more panels on it, each lasting an hour. One's chaired by our, uh, our chairman of the Board of Governors, Carlton Johnson, who is a colonel in the US Air Force, retired. And the idea is to bring together a panel of people with a military background or interests uh, who uh, can talk about the military aspects of, of Dark Skies. And one thing that's a little different about Dark Skies, or a little different on this panel, is we usually don't have military panels at the ICC. It's not our policy to do that. And we're certainly not taking a position here, but we're going to examine the military ideas in Dark Skies where uh, a, a big thesis that Mr. Dr. Dooney puts forward is that asteroids are powerful weapons and we're gonna examine whether that's really true or not. Um, and so we have uh, Stan Rosen, who's a longtime NSS leader and, and really has an absolutely outstanding military career. And it, it's so, you should, you know, I'll, I'll show you where the bios are in a second, but you should read the bio, it's, it's almost beyond belief. Um, we have, um, we have an officer from the JAG Corps, an assistant professor of law at the Air Force Academy, Mr. Grunert. We have Peter Gerritsen, who's a well-known advocate for space polar power. And we have myself, hopefully I'll add a little something to this. Um, so uh, then, then the final panel will be the civilian aspects of dark skies. And the thing that's exciting about this to me is that uh, uh, do, the argument that Dark Skies makes uh, against space settlement is based in large part on political science. It's basically the idea that space settlements will uh, actually exist and they'll be successful and then they will diverge genetically, politically, spiritually, and then they will become angry with each other and eventually we'll all fall to fighting and it'll be really bad. And so the idea is to bring together uh, a panel of, of top level uh, thinkers and political scientists to uh, talk about whether this actually makes any sense or not. And it's moderated again by Michelle Hanlon. Uh, we've got Professor Claudina Scran, who's a Rhodes Scholar from uh, Professor of Government at Lawrence University, who is you know, a political scientist. <laughs> we've got Jeff Greeson, who I think doesn't really need any introduction. Greg Autry, our VP of Space Development, and who's, again, I think, very, very uh, well-established person in the, in the space uh, arena. Um, and Rebecca Lippi, uh, Air Force investigator, um, who has is a lot of expertise in space and military law. And of course, uh, Al Globus, who, who you know well and is author of The High Frontier and Easier Way. So I just wanna, um, I guess that's kind of the, the main point here. Um, I, I just wanna say that uh, 
if you want to find out more about the speakers, we have uh, we have uh, their pictures and their bios on the other half of this. And I urge that you uh, you know you take a look at it and check it out. I think it's it's really outstanding, and you're you're going to see a very interesting discussion. And I think I think I've said pretty much everything I want to say. So hopefully we'll be able to have some questions before we go on to the uh, the membership part. Over. Thanks, Dale. And thanks, Aggie and Rod. Yes, we had some questions that were actually submitted uh, beforehand, and I'll get to those. But I uh, uh, hope everyone gets a, a got a good glimpse of how exciting this ISDC is, including the interactive Sunday. So we do hope you can join us. So let me share my screen again, everybody. And I will take us to the questions that had been submitted beforehand. And again, reminder everybody of each of the websites. I believe Fred has put them into the chat so you can uh, take a look at the program and also register for the Sunday Interactive. Can I mention one thing while you're doing oh, that? Sure, go ahead. Part that I thought about, um, Sunday Interactive is you sign up, you register, and you'll be sent a link, and that's on Zoom, correct, Dale? That's all going to be sent out to them when they sign up? When you sign up, you will get a link to the Zoom seminar. All you'll have to do is click on it. Right. And then the other three days are going to be broadcast through um, various different means. So when people ask, how, how do I see it? You can see it through our Facebook, NSS's Facebook, NSS's YouTube, space.com's YouTube, which is a huge, big audience that comes to us, E360 TV and virtually anything else because E360 goes out through connected TV like Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and then through various social media ports. So when you go to the site, you'll see a whole pile of places where you can click in and see it and you can watch it on anything from your phone to your laptop to your 60 inch screen TV if that's what you wanna do. Um, so just, just uh, to let everybody know, there's lots of different ways of seeing these things and, and your Zoom link as well. Once you've got the Zoom link, there's a number of different ways you can watch that. Your phone, your laptop, your your desktop, all sorts of different things. We live in a modern world where we can connect any which way we want. Go ahead, Bert. Very Just good. wanted to mention that. Well, that kind of ties into what you mentioned about where you can view, but people, some people did submit a question about do they need to register for the ISDC? They do for the Sunday because the Sunday has a fee attached and they do have to register for that and get the link for the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, they just have to click on. And as I said, there's lots of different places. Go to the site and there'll be direct links to Facebook. There'll be direct links to YouTube and there'll be direct links to E360 and explanation of where else you can go and then space.com as well. Very good. Thank you, Aggie. Uh, Dale, you kind of touched on this already, but uh, uh, yeah, a few people had asked why there's a cost hit it, hit it for the Sunday here. event. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, you look, it shouldn't surprise anybody that COVID has not been kind to NSS. And, uh, you know, our normal sources of revenue, the in-person ISDC is, is a big one. And we have been denied that revenue and it's not good. So uh, we're looking around for ways that we can make some money. And otherwise, you know, that's going to be really bad. And uh, so I, I think... Um, we're, we're trying an experiment. As I said, we're seeing if, if our members are, are willing to uh, support NSS by putting in a pretty modest fee, very modest compared to the cost of going to an ICC, which is orders of magnitude greater. Um, and also with a 10% discount, I might add, for members. Um, so we'll, I, that's why there's a cost. And uh, you know, this may seem uh, ironic, that the uh, that there are no actual costs. I'm being totally honest here. I mean, it's totally volunteer organized interactive Sunday, and it is an experiment to see if we can actually bring in a meaningful sum of money from that. So I, I urge you to do it, and I assure you that we need the it will the money will be well spent. It will be very well spent. Um, as far as the, the published schedule, I, you know, the link I showed you has the schedule for Interactive Sunday. Maybe Aggie could address the, I, the three-day schedule. Sure. And, and I was also going to say that you know, we want to take a look at how the Sunday works out because it's something that we can do again in the fall. So this doesn't have to be a one-time thing. If we find there's a good amount of support for it, 
Um, there's not, no reason why we couldn't do it another time, you know, and, and do something like this on that scale and hopefully yeah. have our members support it. I just um, want to add one more thing. Sorry to interrupt, Peggy. Sure. But part of the idea of charging a fee is to create a more private space that's more mm -hmm. like the ISDC, where there's not just a lot of random people, but it's more like a group of friends who are space people who are having a conversation. And now, again, that's an experiment. I don't, I don't know if that'll work out, but that's one of the goals. We're trying to do something virtually that we do with the in-person ISDC all the time, over. Very good. Um, Go ahead, question I, about, the, talk about the schedule. Yeah, the, there will be a published schedule. Um, we are just putting everything together and thank you, Rod, for all that because it's a huge amount of work putting 60 pieces of material together. We will have a published schedule this weekend. So for, for the better part of a week prior to, there will be a published schedule. Now I'll tell you, you know, it's not going to be minute to minute to minute because some of these things are 12 minutes and 14 minutes and 22 minutes, but there'll be a really good outline of, of when things are going to be on and and the days run between five and six hours so they start at nine in the morning on thursday on friday on saturday and we'll run approximately nine in the morning pacific time noon east coast time and we'll run approximately five to six hours each day and uh, that you'll be able to look at the published schedule by this weekend um, next question will the sessions be available for later viewing eventually they will but not immediately we really want to try to get people to come to this even if they can only watch one day part of a day part of two days we want them to see it the way it is right now then we'll showcase probably most of it we'll decide what portions of the four days we'll showcase again and put that out in a very very early morning time zone so it works for europe and india and places like that and after all of that we will split it into segments and you'll be able to watch those segments so it'll be broken into hour or two hour segments but that'll come weeks later and just to be clear the interactive sunday basically will not be available yeah. for later viewing so if it'll be the other it, three days it'll be the other money three. and see it you know don't expect you're going to see it later Good advice, Dale. Uh, there was a, a question about creating short tutorial sessions. And it's, in a way, it sounds like you have some of those, Aggie, when you said some are 10 minutes, some are 12 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but I thought it was an interesting approach to, to maybe uh, something to think about in the future. It, it is an interesting approach. And it's an interesting thought when we break it into segments, when we break those three days into segments because of people's, one of the reasons we went with these short segments, these short sections is because people have no attention span. You know, it's tough unless it's something you're really, really excited and interested in. It's tough to hold their attention for very long. So this, this movement and the fact that we'll have a schedule, they can kind of pick what they want to see. And this movement from one thing to another to another. And as Rod described, some of them are just a real kick they were a lot of fun to film they're interesting they're dynamic um and some are much more kind of structured and and, and more in-depth and more detailed and, and more advanced i'll call it um so i don't know quite what they mean by short tutorial sessions but i'm assuming they mean you know 10 15 minutes 20 minute sections and we have a lot of them a whole lot of them so when we talk about splitting them up we'll kind of figure out how and what and where, but there's there's at least 10 in there that I can see pulling out and just putting out on our own on our YouTube site and different places because they were just so cool. Like the Steve's tour of his office, you never see that anywhere. It was the coolest thing I was having that's a great time. Because nobody seeing. else has a collection like his. That's right. That's <laughs> it. And and there's that. others like that too. There's some other really interesting tidbits, like 10 or 15 or 20 minutes of something. So yes, we will we will pull some of those things out and show them and hopefully get a huge audience to our YouTube site for something like that, because it is so different. I, I do wonder uh, what he means by tutorial. That's from, from Dave Chevron, I think is I pronounced his name right. Um, that, that, that kind of intrigues me. So I'd, I'd like to hear more about what he's thinking. We can follow up with that. Uh, there was that last question, and then I, I, I do see one that was submitted just now on the, the site, but... Uh, I will answer that last question. We are really excited. We are going to have an in-person ISDC next May, the, the very end of May, in Arlington, Virginia, at the Hyatt Regency. Um, it is scheduled. It's ready. Uh, I mean, it's ready. It's, it's getting ready. We're getting geared up for it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And it'll be great to have an in-person event again, because it will have been a long stretch since we've had one. 
So Arlington, Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., the last weekend in May of 2022. Very good. I think I was involved in a little pilot-induced oscillation here where the, uh, the slides were not advancing, and I hit them a couple times, and then they went, and then they came back. So I think I'm, I'm out of that PIO right now. So, uh, so thanks, Aggie. Let me take a look and see the question that was submitted. And... Let's call that up. And it does come from uh, David. Uh, how will the interactions be handled? Is a Facebook account or YouTube channel, uh, will they be required? Interaction on the first three days. We're not talking about the interactive day, right? The, he's, I think David's referring to the last day and that'll all be handled through Zoom. Yeah, that's we'll Zoom. You a, can all talk to each other. We'll have a moderator that will basically uh, uh, like signal people to ask their questions at the end of uh, the panel discussions. Will you actually be turning on the mics or just taking it from a uh, taking it from the the, the typed in Q and A? Well, I think uh, we'll be doing both. It, it'll be up to the moderator of each session, but um, ideally, people queue up their questions just like they do in these sessions, and there will be some interactive at the end. So uh, maybe we'll get some key speakers to come in and ask uh, specific questions. Well, the intention is to live dangerously and you know actually recognize some people to speak. Although I think that you know, the experience is gonna be different. If we really have 450 people, that's gonna be, you know, you're only gonna recognize too many people to speak, right? It's just realistically, it's not gonna happen. If, if the number is smaller, it's obviously gonna be a little more intimate. I think the thing that'd be interesting, I, I wonder if we could charge more for smaller sessions. <laughs> uh, you can see I'm always okay, greedy, about Dale. money. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I have to uh, drop away. And I, I just want to say, I mean, no disrespect to, to Vice President Dick. And uh, I'm not in any way um, uh, trying to urge you to not listen to him or suggest it's not important. <laughs> So I apologize, Bert. No problem, Dale. We appreciate taking the time to uh, to join us. Uh, by the way, David said that was not his question on the tutorials. Mm -hmm. We could try to find out uh, who yeah. that was from. Yeah, it's weird. It, it came Dave up under his name. Offline a little yeah. more about what he wants. Yep. And hmm. but uh, there was another question from uh, so Dale. We appreciate you stopping by. If you do need to drop off, there was a question from Jeffrey. Uh, can people register in order to get an email reminder? and the hyperlink the day before the ISDC and each day thereafter? The reason we decided not to is because I did do it the last time and it was lovely to have, you know, a thousand plus people register, but then they were all sending me notes and all sorts of other things. So it, it, it's just difficult to handle when we're hoping to get 30 or 40,000 people. So the numbers, you know, are going to be large. And if you don't have somebody dedicated to it, people feel neglected. And I didn't want people to feel neglected. So you can send me a note if you want me to send you a reminder, since we know each other personally. But in general, no, we're not just opening up for everybody to say, hey, send me a reminder. It was just, it's too big. And our goal is to have too many people to be able to do that. Right. Well, but Interactive add, Sunday will be different. I would yeah, just there add will be a reminder if, for Interactive Sunday. Yeah you will receive a reminder, at least one reminder. I And I, you may get more, but at least one. And I would like to add that uh, the more of us that get on social media, the more we'll see these reminders because there will be a lot uh -huh. of social media activity around this. So that's probably the best way to keep apprised, get on Twitter uh, and check Facebook, NSS page. Very good. Let me see if there are any more questions uh, concerning uh, the ISDC, anybody? Anyone else have any additional questions? I don't see any more. And uh, we're just about to uh, 45 minutes after the hour. So I do want to especially thank Aggie and Rod and, and Dale for coming in to talk about the ISDC. It looks like a fabulous program and I'm looking forward to it. And I hope all of you can join in uh, either for hopefully the for all of it if you can but also take part in that uh, interactive Sunday as well. Any final comments, Aggie, Rod, or Dale, as we move I into the next one? I want to say I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Bye-bye. Hi, Dale. Thanks, Bert. Really appreciate everything you do.
Yeah, we really do. We appreciate everything. We're hoping everybody checks it out. And, and as we said, you know, just spread the word out there for people to see a lot of really great content. If they're interested in space, they will have a great time on, you know, whatever portion of those three days they can watch. And right. then obviously sign up for the fourth if they're keenly interested in those things. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And uh, what we want to do now is uh, make a transition uh, to the next portion of the program. And I'm going to stop sharing for a second because I just want to see who else has joined. We have a number of guests from our membership uh, committee that have joined uh, this evening as part of the panel. And I believe uh, my colleague and VP of Chapters, Larry Ahern, would like to say something probably before we start. Larry, is uh, would you like to say something? I was just going to, uh, I hope we were able to uh, record this and edit it that we can, uh, anybody that wants to get the word out, we can send uh, a copy of this out there. They can distribute uh, uh, for the ISDC. Uh, is that, I'm just asking, is that- It's being recorded and we'll have a link hopefully shortly after the end of the session tonight that will be Good. Good. everybody, yes. And I will be sending out, just by the way, everybody, because we have some links in, in the presentation, uh, as well as the upcoming presentation on membership, I will be sending the entire slide deck out to everybody as well. So you'll be able to use that if you need to uh, do any additional uh, promotion and, and help us out and get a lot of people to come to the ISDC. Very good. So. Larry uh, Ahern was going to join me as well as we discussed uh, a membership overview and we've got about uh, a max of about a half an hour and we certainly don't want to keep you too long and there's a lot to cover and we can do more of it at another time as well. So we'll try to focus in on some of the key aspects. But what I want to do right now real quickly uh, is to stop sharing. And I'm gonna put this into gallery mode so I can just see who else has uh, joined us. So uh, my colleague from the membership committee and the chair of the membership committee, uh, Ronnie LaJoy is here with us. Also, we have the chair of our value enhancement subcommittee, Rich Howard. And another member of the uh, membership committee and also from our, from our education area is uh, Francis Delutri. And of course, uh, uh, Fred Becker, who is part of the uh, membership committee as well, is handling all of our technical aspects. And Dave Dressler, our director for information systems, uh, who supports us as well. So we have a good group of people here to hopefully address any issues that come up. Uh, also, Dave Stewart. Oh, is Dave here? I didn't see him there. Is he there? Let's see, where is Dave? I do not see him on, is he on? No, maybe not. Well, hopefully he will join. And so what- Yeah, he's on. I think you just have to elevate him from attendee to panelist. Oh, Fred, can you do that? Uh, I thought I had, I'm sorry, I thought we had invited him. Oh, okay, well. I'll go do it. Yeah, why don't you do that? Make sure Dave is a uh, panelist. So Dave Stewart, also a, a member of our membership committee and the chapters as well. So let me get back to sharing the screen. And uh, there he is, Dave is there. Yay, Dave, you made it. Uh, so yeah. let me get back Hello, to sharing the <laughs> And uh, we can decide how much to go through. What I've tried to do is uh, provide some uh, context to everything in terms of the membership committee. So here you see uh, a list of the, of the membership committee and that includes me as the VP of membership and uh, Ronnie and Rich and all the members of the, of the committee as well. So it's a great group of people and all volunteers here to serve and hopefully enhance your membership experience. And what we wanna do tonight, and I'll go through this quickly so we can answer questions because I think that's the most important aspect is take a look at membership at a glance. And I wanna thank uh, Fred Becker for creating this graphic that really highlights a lot of aspects of what it means to be uh, an NSS member. And I think what we'll do to start off is just talk a little bit about some accomplishments we've had over the past year and a half. And we know it's been a, a challenging year for 
NSS and a lot of other organizations. But I've tried to put these into some several categories. So in terms of keeping members informed, that's the biggest reason people join NSS is to stay informed about the space program and what's happening with space settlement. And we did a number of things last year and we're continuing this year, especially the virtual aspects, these space forums and town halls. We were doing them once a week actually in 2020 and we've moved to a bi-weekly schedule, bringing in industry leaders, subject matter experts and talking about NSS as well. And believe it or not, we've done almost 40 of these since we started back in April of 2020 with an attendance of almost 5,000 people. So they've been incredibly successful and we know you have found them rewarding and we're gonna keep doing those. We did a virtual day in space last year on July 16th. That was kind of a precursor for what we're doing with the virtual ISDC. The Space Settlement Summit was done virtually. That was usually an in-person event held in November brings together leading people and, and companies and organizations uh, trying to make space settlement a reality. The Space Ambassadors Program, there are 40 space ambassadors. If you are, and I'll be talking about that shortly, but if you're an expert and like to talk about space, you can go out and talk to groups and other chapters and a lot of other organizations. And even our chapters, knowing that we couldn't do face-to-face -face activities, started offering their own virtual events. So. A lot of things were done to adapt to this virtual environment. We also did a number of things related to student engagement and inspiring the next generation. You know, wanted to make sure that students might choose a STEM path and hopefully even go into the space uh, industry as well. And I mentioned the SPUN debates. These are uh, virtual debates that we did last year. And actually they're going on right now. And Francis can talk a little bit more about that but like 40 more or more students from around the world are part of these really engaging debates on key issues. We have the space settlement contest uh, and uh, actually uh, has students up to grade 12 in 2020, more than 14,000 students were involved and that's gonna be happening again this year. And the Space Edge Academy is a repository for lesson plans, activities, resources, another way to inspire uh, the next generation about 110 lesson plans are in there now, and we've reached more than 400,000 educators and students. So, so we're doing a lot to inspire that next generation. Uh, we've also done more in space policy and law. Uh, the Space Policy Committee has issued three uh, position papers uh, and is uh, always looking at where we need to be in terms of space policy. And we formed the new NSS Legal Fellows Program uh, and actually we featured some of them uh, in a previous space forum. So hopefully you've had a chance to, to experience them. It's a really new, exciting area. Along with the technology, we're looking at the law and of course, uh, working with the Alliance for Space Development, you know, working with congressional staffers to promote uh, the objectives of both NSS and uh, the Alliance for Space Development. So let me see if uh, any of my panelists have anything additional to say, because I'll go into real quickly uh, a review of the benefits, and then we can get into some questions. Uh, anything additional, anybody at this point, before we go into that? Okay, great. What I want to really emphasize is something we started last year. It's called Inside NSS, and this is our membership portal. Uh, it gives members a chance uh, to really take control of their own membership account uh, and enhance their own membership experience. And if we have time, I can take you in there live today to show you what it looks like. You have to be a member to, to get in, uh, but you have the ability to maintain your own personal information. You never have to call anybody. You never have to email anybody. You can change your password. You can change your contact information, your email, your phone number and decide what you want to see and what you, how you want to interact with NSS. You have a chance to create a member profile like you might have on Facebook. You can renew, you can actually pay, you know, make a donation, register for events. There's a member feed like, uh, like in social media. There are groups that you can be far, part of and you can access Ad Astra and Ad Astra Downlink, our e-zine, 
directly from the portal. You can create a photo album. And we're actually gonna be working to create some NSS forums where people can exchange ideas. I really encourage you, if you have not yet done this, to sign into Inside NSS. Uh, the link is there. Uh, if you haven't signed in yet, uh, we can send you some information to do that, or you can actually go in and just put in that you forgot your password and you'll be, as long as you have an email address on record and you know what that address is, and we're communicating with you with that email, you'll be able to get a password and sign into it. So I encourage you to take a look at that uh, as soon as possible. As you know, you've probably been informed about these before. Uh, we have we had uh, Rod on earlier, the, the editor for Ad Astra. Uh, it is a magnificent magazine. The last issue was 100 pages. You get four issues a year. Uh, you can access, again, the current and previous issues on Inside NSS. Uh, so I encourage you, read this magazine. It is fabulous. Ad Astra Downlink is our easy, and it comes out approximately twice a month. Uh, it's an electronic newsletter that's sent to your email address has latest information about what's happening with NSS and also additional things in the world of space. Again, you can also access the previous issues on Inside NSS. And if you haven't taken a look at space.nss.org, our website, you can actually see our blogs. Uh, these are current. We have uh, press releases, we have book reviews, we have upcoming events. All those things are part of the blogs. You can sign up to actually get an email notice when a new blog uh, article appears. And uh, it's a great way to stay current with what's going on with NSS and the space program. There are opportunities for you to get involved. There's our NSS political action network. We have our March storm. Uh, there are a number of ways to make sure your voice is heard uh, with, with our political leaders so we can advance the NSS position on space settlement. And of course, we're hoping for face-to-face -face activities coming in the future. You're gonna be able to meet and engage with space leaders at the ISDC, the International Space Development Conference. This time, you're not gonna be able to see them in person, but I hope you can take a look and see them virtually. And we hope to get back to more uh, in-person activities as we move forward. And of course, you get a discount uh, as an NSS member for the ISDC. Uh, other activities, and we have Larry and Dave on tonight to, to answer any questions about chapters, uh, but there are opportunities to join a local chapter and take part in some additional activities that are right there in your neighborhood. We don't have chapters everywhere, but if you're interested in creating one, we can help support you there. And I mentioned earlier about the, the space ambassadors about a, being able to be a speaker and going out and spreading the word about uh, what's happening in space development. So all these things are available to you. And of course, don't miss these other benefits. I mentioned about inspiring the next generation. There's a lot of information on our education site of the, of the website, the contests and competitions I mentioned, the Space Educa Ed Academy and our fun student debates. And we can talk a little bit about more about that when we get into some of the discussion. And finally, too, uh, you can take advantage of joining the NASA Federal Credit Union. Uh, we are a partner association with the NASA Federal Credit Union. So you have an ability to join and take part in the, uh, all the resources that they have and some great deals on credit cards, loans, that type of thing as well. And uh, just like any NASA employee. And I also encourage you, Dale mentioned this, uh, Aggie mentioned this, uh, about all the things that are on our social media, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, uh, YouTube and Twitter, all of these space forums and town halls, we're trying to get the recordings on YouTube, but there's a lot else, there's a lot of other great material there uh, for you to take advantage of. Uh, so make sure you're checking those out, make sure you like them, you sign up for those things so that you can have access to the latest news. So I'm really encouraging everyone not to miss out on their NSS membership benefits. I know we've gone through this really fast, so we can spend a little time answering some questions, but any kind of membership organization, people always ask, well, what's in it for me? 
And you can see there's a lot in it for you as an NSS member. And I applaud you and thank you for being NSS members. But there's a lot more you can take advantage of. It's sometimes it's finding out what's there and making that decision. A lot of it is not a, just about waiting for something to come to you. It means you need to take some action as well, whether it's reading an Ad Astra, whether it's going to an ISDC, or whether it's becoming a, a judge for the spun debate, as an example. So all these things are available to you. So I encourage you, you know, don't miss out on your NSS membership benefits. So what I'd like to do now is uh, bring in our panel. Uh, and uh, we've got so, a few, just a few questions that were submitted uh, beforehand. Uh, and we can hopefully go through these. What I do intend to do for all the questions that were submitted is I'll put some answers in uh, before I send the slide deck out so people will know what the answers were. But Bert, our uh, CEO is also on as an attendee. Do you want to make her a panelist too? Oh, sure. Let's do that. Absolutely. And that's Anita Gale. You've met Anita before. So if there are any questions, uh, we would welcome that. Uh, we've got a great group of uh, our volunteers here tonight as well. So, so a, a, a quick question. We did get a question from a non-member about how they need to join. And you can go right to space.nss.org. Uh, and there's a link that says join. Uh, join NSS. It's in a lot of different places, but I actually put uh, the direct link in this in this answer, and that takes you right to that join page, so that you can start entering that information to join. And then, of course, what do you get for your membership dues? Well, I just shared a lot of information, but we also have a link on the website which describes all these member benefits. There are links in each of these benefits that take you to a specific page so you can learn more about those. So we can talk more about that as we, as we move along the, in, during the evening. Uh, and let me just check the time. We've got about 10 to 15 minutes uh, to answer some additional questions, everybody. And uh, I'm gonna bring my panel in to see if they have things that come up. But there was a question uh, that was submitted by our attendees about providing more support for chapters. And I don't know how we wanna handle this. We've got Larry, we've got David uh, and Ronnie. Uh, who would like to tackle this question first? Uh, well, I'd like to mention the fact that uh, I don't know what they need a question. If, uh, if it's uh, electronic, I think Ronnie can answer a lot of those questions and so would David. If they're looking for material support, uh, uh, I, I, you know, the devil's in the details. I like to know what they mean by more support. I couldn't tell you more about it, Larry. That was the question, uh, and uh, you know, maybe it's a case where the leaders of the chapters are asking for more support from the leadership of NSS. Uh, I can't say specifically, but it, you know, is, is there a way to just touch on what we currently do? Well, members. do we know if the person who asked the question is one of the attendees? I don't know. I didn't look to see uh, if anyone did ask that question. If you could uh, either raise your hand. I uh, think the one thing that one thing that we've been doing was we've been supporting the activities of chapters because of COVID to do virtual, and we uh, had a lot of a uh, lot of virtual things. And if there, there, I think there's a lot more we can do uh, as far as online. Uh, events with chapters but we're, we're getting out of COVID now we're going and uh, we're going to be gearing up to do a lot more in-person uh, meetings and uh, we're going to have to uh, and I think that's what they want to know what's what kind of support and we're uh, we're going to be uh, rolling that out as we go along as we uh, get back on our feet again okay and what I can do is I will find who submitted this uh, question and get that to both Larry and to uh, and to Dave, so maybe we can follow up via email with that individual. Yeah, Bert, this, Bert, this is Francis. Yes, Bert, hi, Francis, Bert, I saw you raised your hand. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I think uh, support is, is an interesting question. Um, and uh, what I have found in the last a couple of years with NSS is a great deal of cooperation and collaboration across the different areas, uh, volunteer groups. Uh, within NSS, and I've been thrilled at the support that uh, 
we in education are getting in various places. Um, and so I would encourage uh, whoever was asking that question about support, start reaching out, start talking to the leaders uh, and voicing what it is you need and uh, find out more about uh, what's available. Thank you. Very good. And like I said, we'll follow up. I'll, I'll see who asked it. Uh, I know it's usually it's attached to a name and an email. So we'll make sure we follow up with that individual. Uh, another question. Bert? Yes, go ahead. It's Dave. Oh, hey, Dave, Dave. Go ahead. Absolutely, Dave. So on the chapter front, because our chapters are literally around the world, I are our discussions with and between chapters is on multiple fronts. Uh, the chapters committee obviously tries to interact with the chapters from the NSS standpoint uh, and support them where they can, but many chapters also support each other, uh, especially when they're geographically nearby. Uh, when they have events, uh, it's good to do staffing tables and cooperative events to make it easier, especially on like sci-fi conventions or longer conventions where you have two or three days of staffing a table. It, it helps a lot. Uh, the other thing that the chapters do is reaching out in their local community to touch other groups and other types of organizations that are interested in space and collaborate with them. And that generates a whole bunch of support just within their local community. And I encourage all of the people to look around their own community to see what aerospace companies are actually doing in their area. They'd be surprised to see actually how much aerospace activities are happening uh, in smaller companies in their own area and try and engage them. They're oftentimes very, very open to uh, going on a Zoom event or even coming and talking uh, because not that many people inquire about smaller companies and what their engagement is. And that's a way to get local participation within your own community. Uh, and then if you have a chance to record it and they will allow you, then share it with the other chapters in the NSS community at large. That, that spreads uh, the local community out to a national and international audience. Yeah, um, just, Go ahead, Larry. Uh, just to add to that, uh, uh, one thing that we came up with uh, uh, with the Zoom meetings is when a chapter comes up with an outstanding speaker. In the past, the only people that heard that speaker was the local chapter. Now, because of Zoom, a, a, a chapter can come up with an outstanding speaker. We can uh, anybody that wants to come in across the country and across the world can uh, tune in on what that pr program is going to be, with building the audience. Right. Absolutely. No, it gives us a it gives us a lot more uh, ability to to uh, spread the word and reach uh, reach different people who wouldn't normally be able to. So that uh, sounds great. Anything <laughs> else on the chapter before we move on to the next question? Okay, and like I said, we'll follow up with that individual. Uh, this one uh, is, is interesting question. It appeared I went back and looked at the last time we did a membership uh, benefits program like this, and it was asked then as well about uh, setting up launch tours as a benefit. And, and I can let some of my other colleagues speak, but I'll, uh, I was actually an NSS member way back in uh, 1985. I actually joined when I was in college, but I went to see a launch with NSS, uh, actually uh, STS-61C, uh, in December 1985. And of course, you know what happened uh, in January 1986. And uh, we went, uh, Lori Garber was actually the, the guide for us, you know, who of course eventually went on to NASA. Uh, and it was just a great time, but of course, STS-61C did not launch. Uh, so 
Uh, and we missed the launch because it didn't happen until later in January uh, before Challenger, of course. So there's a tremendous risk when you try to do a launch tour uh, with a lot of people being disappointed. Uh, so I'm not sure that is something we want to try to get into again. I know there are lots of, there are going to be a lot of launches where people will be able to go down to, to KSC, who knows, go to Texas as well, or New Mexico. Uh, so I, I don't know if that's something we would want to do, but I would offer this. Uh, I think there could be opportunities for us to set up tours at different space museums and things like that, that we could host and invite the people who live in that area local. I'm a volunteer at the Intrepid Museum uh, and I've set up tours for a lot of different groups like ASME for some universities uh, and easily could host a, a group of uh, NSS members who are either in the New York City area already uh, or who might be interested in, in uh, who might be interested in traveling. So I think that is something we should be looking into but I'm not sure we'll be looking into the launch tours themselves because again, uh, it's too, too, too problematic uh, and there's too much risk of, of disappointment uh, if it doesn't launch. And I see Ronnie has raised his hand and Dave has raised his hand. So Ronnie, I'll start with you. Yeah, um, I think what we can do in the short term, you know, keep in mind we've had a 10 year dry spell where we weren't launching people. Now I'm pretty sure launch tours are talking about people launches. Yes. Um, you know, we weren't launching people for 10 years. so. Uh, and NSS has gone through a lot of changes. Uh, I believe what we can do in the short term is see if there are groups out there we can partner with and see if we can do something like a member discount or something, uh, or at least an awareness campaign so that they notify us when they're handling a tour. We, we definitely need a local group uh, that we can coordinate with. Um, you know, we just, you know, in the old days, we used to have enough chapters, you know, if a local chapter is in the area and wants to help lead it, that would be great. Right. But um, I think in the short term, I don't think the national group currently can handle the entire logistics of it. And as Bert said, a lot of times they just don't launch on time. And, and what do you do? So do you arrange a week down there? You know, if you try to do it as a day trip, you're pretty much likely to miss the launch. So, you know, having a local group that can host you for the night. So if it's just delayed a day, you know, and people are willing to do that. So, you know, a lot of logistical things, but I think if we can at least partner with some groups that are already doing it, um, I think that might be a way to get back into that business. Sounds like we should try. Uh, Dave, anything additional? Yeah, we've been or, uh, working on organizing a space cruise where we'd basically have some keynote speakers that would go on the cruise boat with us. Uh, COVID kind of messed up our original plan with that, but I think that's gonna get back on track. So that'll be a really cool option. Basically, you'll be on a cruise boat with uh, some pretty high level people for a week. Also, there's an event that Anita has been involved in, a Dale Amon. It's going to be at the New Mexico, uh, actually not Spaceport, but in Las Cruces at the, it's called Wings and Wheels. And that's going to be uh, last Saturday in September, I believe. So we are getting involved in more live events. And uh, stay tuned. Very uh, good. We'll uh, Bert, I, I did out. want to mention something else. Uh, yes. We're on the cusp of uh, releasing the new homepage on the NSS website. And it's going to be a considerable change from what everyone's used to. So uh, everybody uh, tune in uh, at least by Monday and look at our space.nss.org and, and check out the new website. Thanks, Bert. Very good, thank you, Dave. Uh, Larry, uh, you've got your hand raised and there were, there were a couple questions that came in uh, that I want to get to before we're, we sign off because we're getting too much of time. Go ahead, Larry. I just, want, I just want to point out that the thing is if we get, if we get the local people on the ground, there, we can do uh, uh, space museums or even uh, launches uh, we can do these things uh, virtually, and uh, people can. Uh, act. When you see these things on on television, they're always they cut you off like this. If people want to. If we can get local people with cameras on site, we can probably do a, a virtual uh, opening for not only launches but have uh, local people do uh, tours that uh, people can uh, tune in all the time. And 
Uh, by the way, Larry, NASA does that already. I've, I've, I've actually signed up for their virtual program. So I actually get a yes. stamp uh, for every launch I, I view virtually. So, so maybe there's something we could do there. That's an interesting idea. And, uh, local museums, like, yeah, like you said, yeah. the, Intrep the Intrepid or something like that, you'd be the tour guide and people could- I would definitely be the tour guide at the Intrepid. Be glad to welcome anybody there. Uh, so maybe we'll, maybe that's one we could experiment with as a starting point for a tour and uh, see what, uh, you know, see what we can do with that. Uh, I, I only just see, uh, let's see, a couple questions from William. Okay, uh, not actually questions, but would like to take your scout troop uh, at some time and, uh, but run out of tour guides as the Apollo people have passed away. Yep. Uh, and a, and a non-man, the launch is fine too. Not necessarily seeing a, a human, human uh, crewed flight uh, uh, is important. So uh, William, just, you know, we've been in touch with before by email, feel free to contact me. Uh, two last questions, everybody. Uh, and maybe I, I, I think Aggie had dropped off. Uh, no, I'm but, still here. Oh, I'm you said, still here, Bert. Uh, you, you see the question there, Aggie? Uh, sometimes, I do. Uh, yes. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. most, pe most people, when they don't get their ad astros, call me because my phone number is in the other issues of the ad astros. I, I, every month I end up mailing out at least, you know, half a dozen, a dozen, sometimes many more than that to people who either didn't receive it for some reason. But we can also check to make sure that their, your name is correct in the system. Um, I, I get a, a, a list sent to me. I think Ronnie sends it to me every every time we send out a magazine issue, and I can cross check on there, or Ronnie can check. So we can make sure you're a member because most of the time, if you don't get it, it's either you've moved and didn't give us a change of address, which has happened, or your membership has expired, which is even more common, and you have not renewed when you got your renewal notices. So typically that's what I find when somebody calls and says, I didn't get my magazine, but I do get an issue out to them fairly quickly because I want them to renew. So if that's gonna prompt them to renew, then I'll get that issue out to them right away. And occasionally they do get lost or shredded or something happens. So just let me know my, my name and contact information, email and phone number is inside the magazine. And uh, you know, typically I hear from a dozen or so people a month. I'll include that. Message. Another reason is is you're actually paying for digital only. You have a digital oh, only that's true, yeah. membership, and and um, that's something we're we're going to be more obvious in the future when you renew. So that's part of a, a, a new renewal uh, form and letter capability that's about to go out. Uh, but in terms of what should you do, so if you don't have Aggie's phone number, in on Inside NSS, there's a contact us form. If you use that, it will be tracked and they check every day. The staff checks every day. Um, in lieu of that, you can send an email to nsshq at nss.org, um, but that gets flooded with lots of other emails. So it, it's a guaranteed way of making sure it's tracked and closed is right. the contact us form. Calling headquarters these days is not the best option, which is why Aggie's saying call her, um, because a lot of the, the staff is still working from home. And so there's delays in and a lot of times in getting them to call people back. So that calling the, the the main office right now, which is probably not a good thing to say, but right now that, you know, the reality is it's it's not recommended. What I'll do is I'll put Aggie's contact information in here for to answer this question. So should anyone, uh, should that happen to anybody? So that would that would uh, uh, work out well then. And uh, and, and sometimes too, uh, I know we've had, uh, I've had emails come to me that people did not get their ad astra as well because I've passed my email out. And usually it's, uh, I work with them and they get it the next day. It's, it, it, the mail takes a long time sometimes. Oh yeah, that's true. That one I forgot about. I get lots that say I haven't gotten and I say it only went up two weeks ago. You got to give it a little bit more time because some people get it in a week or two, some people longer because we send it out magazine bulk rate which is not the quickest way to get it. And can, people can take up to three weeks or longer, depending on where they are to get it. Overseas is the only thing that goes out first class. Rarity. Aggie, it occurs to me that one thing that might help uh, as well as with the libraries as well, um, is once it's actually in the mail, mm -hmm. that we actually let our members know. So that way, they know it's on its way that it may take, you know, two or three weeks to sure. show up. Sure. Yeah. Maybe we should yeah. put that in download. Maybe that would be a really good that's thing to put in download. Yes. Yeah. 
along with the link to the magazine itself, which we do do, you know, the, the online version, so that people can see the online version in, in downlink. Um, but then again, we run into the problem is, is everybody a member who gets downlink? And I'm not 100% sure about that. But if they uh, are, that would be a good place to put yep. it with the fact that the physical copies have gone out and give yourself two to three weeks to get it. Yeah. Very um, good. Uh, have we changed the which have we changed the policy so that the digital issue is available before the print one shows up? Or are we still yes. waiting? For no, we okay. usually have the digital about a week after the print one is ready. And as I said, it takes two to three weeks to get the print one. So the digital one, you can usually see a good week before you get your print magazine. So okay. Yeah, the old, I, I never was happy with the old technique, which was the person was told to wait till they received their physical copy before they would make the digital No, one no, no, no. We put the digital one out there as soon as I have it, which typically is okay. about a week after the print is done. And the digital yeah. one is a lot different. Rod can tell you more, but we put a lot of links and things in there that you don't get in the physical copy. So there's actually more interactivity in that digital copy than there is ever in the physical copy. That's why people mm -hmm. like digital magazines because there's a lot of links and there's a lot of interactivity. Yep. And they're Rod, all done by hand. Yeah. Yes, Rod does it all. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, we've got a couple of comments in the chat so that I want to get to before we sign off. I know we're about five minutes past, but Ronnie, there was one question. If you could answer that one. As I well. can explain that real quick. Yeah, the, the reason it. is that it's just a timing issue. It, it's it's um, it, certainly if you renew online, it's much less of a risk because when we pull the data, you know, we, we have the latest data from the database. So if you've already renewed it, that your name won't be pulled. But if you renew, if you renew by check, you know, there's, there's an amount of time it takes for that check to get to us. And then there's, you know, a lag in when it gets opened and processed. And so, uh, you know, depending on how busy they are, they, it might be a week for them to get to it once it even arrives at headquarters. And, um, you know, it may be a week or two with the current mess at the post office these days to, to just go through. So that's part of it. The other thing is our, our notices go every month. And so this, that's one of those timing issues where we're doing our best to shorten that as much as possible. Um, and, uh, but yeah, if you get a second notice, uh, one thing that I, I want to implement, and I haven't fit out the exact logistics yet, is to um, actually email members, so members with an email address, let them know when another letter is on its way. Uh, so that way we can kind of put off this, well, I just got another notice in my current. Um, at least if, at least I'll get warning that another letter is on its way. And if you've already renewed, don't worry. So that that's a, a member enhancement I'm hoping to uh, implement soon. Very good. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, and Aggie put her contact information in the, uh, in the chat. So if anyone, uh, needs to you know, have that handy if you ever need to, to reach her. Uh, let me get a, a couple last comments from the chat before we sign off. Uh, I see that David actually had a, a good suggestion that if we did have uh, tours, you know, it could be a case where people go to a tour at, or go to a launch uh, on their own, but maybe there's an there opportunity for us to create places where uh, NSS members could all meet up together. So I think that's an, that's an interesting idea. I know they, they do something similar like that with uh, uh, space hipsters. Uh, and so let's, we can look into that. Uh, there was a question, I'm not sure we're the experts to answer this, but maybe we can get an answer for Robert. Uh, you know, why, the, or why NSS doesn't focus more on the scientific aspects of, of space settlement. Uh, he's a research uh, scientist and educator uh, and uh, I don't know if any of our, our, our current panelists uh, can handle that. I'm not involved in that aspect of NSS, uh, but we can certainly try to get a, a, an answer for that. So if anyone uh, is familiar with the, the, the choices that are made in terms of what we, what we highlight, what we support, you know, I, I, uh, obviously uh, I think Rod is still on and Aggie is still on. They can talk about the fact we are gonna be featuring a number of scientists uh, on, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, at the ISDC as well. So, yes, yes, there there are a number of really interesting scientists that are part of it too. That that uh, I think a lot of people find very fascinating. And and I wanted to say, Bert, thank you so much for doing these. I don't think 
Oh. I don't think people appreciate quite enough what it takes to do this and put all these slides together and organize all of this. And I know you do it as a volunteer and it's just terrific. And thank you so much for doing this. Uh, my pleasure. They, they sometimes give me Sunday afternoon off, so. <laughs> sometimes and not often enough, I'll bet. Uh, we've got one last question uh, uh, that a hand raise and, and, and Carl Rico, one of our uh, chapter officers usually likes to ask a question. So Carl's gonna have uh, the last question for tonight. Let me, let me see if we can, uh, turn on his uh uh let's see i think you're carl i think you're i think you're live now let ask your question and then we're going to be signing off after this okay let me make sure i am alive i guess i am huh? yes you are yeah okay uh you know i wondered um i haven't come across it and it may have been mentioned but i i i haven't heard it that uh uh wondering if there is any kind of updated uh video or some kind of information in that form that talks about NSS in terms of uh, um, who we are, what we do, and so forth, an updated version. Uh, I am not aware of an updated version. I know there are some things like that on our YouTube channel. We've talked about creating some, uh, some new videos uh, just like that. And uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I don't know, Rod, are you familiar with uh, anything like that or Fred? Uh, I have a number of videos that I'm slated to do over the next six months. That's not one of them, but it might be something good to add to the queue. Yes. We do have a um, the new website uh, that yes. we're about to roll out. Uh, the, well, let me rephrase it. The new homepage we're about to roll out. We got, yeah. there's a lot of other pages to make, but one, yes. of, the, one of the features of the new homepage is a, uh, a special kind of menu across the top. And rather than it just being a column of choices, in addition to the column of choices, there's, there's a description on the left of the, about the, a, a description of the category. And then on the right, from what I've seen in the demos, is a, there's a video link. And so since one of those categories is about NSS, it makes sense that we should have a dedicated video specifically about NSS, yes. right there. Oh, okay, so uh, that would uh, suffice then, you think? That might uh, satisfy that kind of requirement in I don't, terms of- I don't, The link they showed wasn't that, so we do need to create it. At least, uh, you know, uh, I, I've seen things in the past, but yeah, you're right. We do need to create an updated version of that. Yep. Here's a great project for Rod. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -oh. Yeah, and it's, it is, and it's spare time, absolutely. Right. We'll get you on that, Rod. <laughs> you bet. So no, I didn't uh, mean to do that. <laughs> get some uh, other people involved, so we don't yeah. want to put everything on Rod. So. Yeah. Rather, I got a, I got a box, I got a couple boxes of uh, old sl uh, slide sets for in it, uh, talking about NSS. <laughs> uh, Those are old. I got Larry. a film strip I can send you. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, literally. Well, very, very good, everybody. Uh, I, I just want to thank everybody who participated. Uh, I know Dale has left, but. Uh, Thanking uh, Aggie and Rod again for uh, the great presentation on the ISDC and all they do for NSS and- uh, Bert Rich has also rich.howard at nss.org. Uh, oh, uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, I, have the, I have the- In old, general- I have this, this old- kind of FYI uh, email audience, here. in general, any leader is first name dot last name at nss.org. So try that Sorry first. That, Rich, get your old- and your old uh, email address on there. So, uh, but uh, I'll, yeah, I'll update really that like before it. I send this out. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, again, I just want to thank uh, Ronnie and thank Larry uh, and Rich and uh, Francis who have, uh, did I miss anybody? And Dave, uh, and of course, Fred for working uh, all of our back, this back scenes uh, for the IT here. Uh, it's been a fun evening. Uh, it sounded like we got some good questions. I didn't know we would go to 1030. I thought we'd end around 1015, <laughs> but I do appreciate everyone for sticking around. Uh, just want to wish you all uh, a great rest of the evening. And if you're in another time zone, a great day ahead of you and a great weekend. Stay safe. We will see you next week at the ISDC uh, and looking forward to that. And then the next time we'll get together will be on July 8th. 
uh, and uh, we'll be sending out messages about that. So again, thanks everybody. Take care. Thanks, Bye. Bert. And Bye. yep, thank you all. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, oh, Anita was on. Thank you, Anita. <laughs> uh, and again, everyone, have a good night. There you are. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.